Uh, the conventional political fault line of left and right doesn't seem terribly useful these days. For the last three years, we've watched so-called right-wing governments enact COVID policies indistinguishable from their so-called left-wing opponents. And they've both wrecked the economy, loosed the worst inflation in half a century upon the world, uh, damaged the generation of kids, driven a stake through core Western liberties, such as freedom of movement, and incidentally killed large numbers of people, as evidenced in the excess mortality stats every week. Boris did it. Justin did it. Scott Morrison in Oz did it. Monsieur Macron in France did it. Left, right, right, left. If electoral politics is just a matter of choosing who gets to screw you over, it's working great. COVID as a cautionary tale is particularly poignant, however, for the British Tories. They have governed this land for 32 of the last 50 years, and the result is the country has never seemed less conservative. Theresa May, remember her? No, me neither. But uh, Theresa May told Tories they had to stop being the nasty party. So they gave up all the social conservatism from the John Major days, the back to basics family value stuff he'd professed to be in favour of, usually about 48 hours before some backbencher was found to be sharing a bed with another bloke in a continental motel, or getting a little carried away and autoerotically asphyxiating himself on his kitchen table in fishnet stockings with a satsuma and a tab of ecstasy. So they got rid of the social conservatism. And the entire Tory party has spent the last 12 years autoerotically asphyxiating itself in front of the nation. It lies there on the dispatch box, writhing in orgasmic ecstasy as it throttles itself for tonight's transient high. OK, so we've ditched the social conservatism. Now we can focus on the economy by converting every hotel in the kingdom into a hostel for Albanian sex traffickers. We can modernize the NHS by turning it into the world's most lavishly funded Zoom call. Until last Thursday, you're standing in the House of Commons with nothing left to wreck so you impose the highest tax burden on the British people since 1948. Oh. And those Ulstermen, remember, you're the Conservative and Unionist Party, is that the name of the party, right? Those Ulstermen you stiffed in the Northern Ireland Protocol, tell you what, you Belfast businessmen, we're going to increase your corporation tax to 25%, which is exactly double what it is south of the border, 12.5% for the guys you're stuck in a single market with. That's just a parting gift in a disintegrating union. Pass me the fishnets and another tab of E. Are we approaching the final denouement of a once great political party? The Tories are on their fifth floppo leader in 12 years, their third in three months, and they seem to be getting even less minimally, residually conservative with each iteration. Would you really be that surprised to hear the 1922 committee announce that Jeremy Corbyn has made it through to the next round of the next leadership contest? Is there an opportunity here for a political realignment?